In this video, I'll show you how to create your own alternative to the drop-down list item in Adobe Captivate. A couple of days ago, I had a one-on-one -on -one session with one of my clients who was purchasing time for instruction and consultation. And we had come up with a slide that included a number of drop-down list items. And one of the things that he noticed, I guess I'm used to it, but one of the things that he noticed was a couple of issues. The drop-down list item appears very small on the screen. And I think the reason for this is that the drop-down list item was developed back when Adobe Captivate was still publishing to Shockwave Flash, probably much smaller windows such as 800 by 600 or 600 by 400. E-learning was generally smaller 10 or 15 years ago. So I decided to come up with my own item that will replace this. And it'll be based on the same idea that you can click this item, select another option between the options that are available. And of course, store that information in a variable that you could use a number of different ways. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do, and, and this would be true if we were using the drop-down learning interaction as well, we need to create a variable that's going to store the value of whatever it is that we wish to contain within this drop-down list box. Now, I like to build these on a single slide project file like this uh, and then save that as part of my e-learning tool belt. Essentially, I can pull this up and reuse this interaction as many times as I wish in other projects as we go here. So for starters, let's create the variable that we're going to store in this particular item here. So I'm going to go into the uh, variables window here and we're going to add a new variable. In this case, we'll call it underscore dropdown zero one. I'm not going to assign a value, and it's in this case actually important that you don't assign a value to it here. I'm going to go ahead and save that, and we're going to go ahead and close the variables window. Now, I've created a shape object on my slide here. Uh, using character fonts, I've, I've placed a little drop-down arrow so that uh, it's reminiscent of a drop-down list box, but in actual fact, like I said, it won't be that. Let's click on the state view so you can see what I've done. I've already selected to use this item as a button, um, but I've added uh, true and false as my alternate states for this button, and I've deleted the rollover and the down states. I don't need those in this particular case here. And you can customize the appearance of this, but whatever your choices are going to be need to be included in your multi-state object here, your multi-state button, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the state here. You can see that uh, I've selected uses button. It's also important to retain the state on slide revisit. The reason being is that your variable value will change and you want it to retain the appearance of whatever's been previously selected, true or false, or yes or no, or agree and disagree. You can use this a number of different ways. So we have our variable, we have our object. Now we need to write our advanced action. When I write advanced actions that will ultimately become shared actions, I always save the advanced action so that if I need to revise it, I've got the work I've done so far. It's impossible to edit a shared action, and that's the reason why I do it this way. So let's click on the project drop-down menu and select advanced actions. We'll give this a name. We'll call it drop-down underscore list. And the first part is very simple. I'm going to call this tab click and we're going to do one action here. We're going to simply toggle the variable that we've created for this particular object here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to toggle it between zero and one. And so initially our value of this variable is null or no value, and then we'll switch it to zero or one. So we need to 
change its appearance to match the value of the variable. I'm going to do that on another decision tab, which I'm going to call change MS for multi-state here. And this is the conditional advanced action that you've seen me do in other videos before. Uh, we're going to say if our variable drop down zero one is equal to the literal value of one, that would be true. One is true, zero is false. We're going to change the state of our drop down button to true. Now I'm going to copy this using the controls that are on the toolbar right here, paste it down in the else section, which is reserved for basically every other situation. Anytime it's not equal to one, we will do the actions that are down here. And I'm just going to change this to false. So I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, click close. For testing purposes, before I save it as a shared action, let's make sure it works uh, as an advanced action. So I'm going to select my button, my drop down button, if you will, and we'll execute advanced actions. And obviously I only have the one, so it automatically selects drop down list here. So let's preview this project and see if this works as expected. So if I tap this, it becomes true or false. It never goes back to that original state because again, we're just going to toggle between true or false. And again, this can be uh, yes, this can be no, this can be agree, this can be disagree. Uh, it would require a little bit of a different advanced action if you had more than two other options. Uh, but this is the basis of how this works. So I'm going to exit from here now and we're now ready to convert our advanced action into a shared action. So I'm going to click on project and we're going to go to advanced actions. We'll open up our drop down list advanced action and we'll click on save as a shared action. And what this does is it remembers the structure of the advanced action, but not necessarily the objects associated with them that I've indicated here. And those can be replaced with other objects and variables when you've created the shared action. Uh, you need to provide descriptions for all the different parameter names that are here. So we have a drop down button. We have the true state and the false state. But because there's going to be the possibility of using this with other drop down selectors or drop down buttons, if you will, I'm going to need to make the variable associated with it uh, variable, if that makes sense. So I'm going to select this and we'll just type in here variable because we, we might need other variables in other projects. And we'll call this one button and we'll call this true and we'll call this false. Whatever description helps you remember uh, what these items are. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, click OK, and we can close the advanced action window now. I'm going to change the on success to uh, execute shared actions. And we'll just go into the parameters associated with that and make sure that they're pointing at the right variables and objects and states. So drop down zero one, the button itself is called drop down button and we'll choose the true state and we'll choose the false state and we'll go ahead and hit save. So now we have a drop down button that's available to copy from this project and paste into any other project. So if I go ahead and right click on this and copy, we'll go ahead and we'll open up another project that contains where I'd like to use it. This is a more than one true false on a single slide here. So I can right click here and we can paste that drop down button and we can place it maybe next to the first of our true false statements. Now, when I copied and paste this into the project, I'll show you a couple things. The first thing came with it was that variable that we created, drop down zero one. 
And of course, the other thing that came with it, of course, is the shared action associated with that. Uh, you can't see it through the advanced action window, but if you go to the library, you can see that it's right there. We can double click and see that it's there. We can't view what it contains, but what we can do is we can click on the object that we're, that's using it and see the parameters associated with it. Now, in this case here, uh, it gave a new name for drop down button, but not to worry whether it renames your variables or your buttons, everything will still function the way it was. So I can actually do this. I can paste it a second time, place it next to what will be my second true false statement for this slide and bring it in a third time for all three of these situations here. So it's using the same shared action three times. And because I chose the variable to be variable, we can actually see that it's created additional copies of that original variable to use to keep track of whether each statement is true or false. I've also added a feedback caption, which by default is not visible in output. And we can also retain the state on slide revisits. Uh, in this case here, there's an alternate statement. So we've got the correct statement is the normal state and incorrect is a secondary state I've created that provides them feedback when they've gotten it wrong. So let's go ahead and write our submit advanced action so that this actually works. And then we'll test the whole thing out. And this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to go into advanced actions. I'm going to create a new advanced action that we'll just simply call submit slide one. And we're going to do a conditional advanced action. So we're going to check the value of those three variables. In this case, drop down zero one. If it is equal to the literal value of zero, because the first one is a false, true, false. And if the next one is equal to the literal value of one, that's the only one that's true in this case. And we'll do the third one here, drop down 133 is equal to also false in this case here. We will show our caption, our feedback caption, and we will change its state to normal, which is the correct option. I'm going to copy all of these statements and go down to the else section of our advanced action, paste those in. Everything will be the same, except in this case, this would be when it's incorrect. So we'll choose that there. We'll save this as an action, click OK, and we can go ahead and close. And let's make sure our submit button is pointing at the appropriate advanced action here for this to work. There it is there, submit slide one. Let's test this out and see if it works as we would expect it to. So here we go. Uh, we'll choose this, we'll get it wrong first. We'll choose false on all three counts there and hit submit. Incorrect, you should probably review your Canadian knowledge before proceeding. You could disable these buttons at this point and prevent people from making another attempt. But you can go ahead and change this to be the right answer and hit submit again. Correct. Canada is the second largest country in the world. Canada Day is celebrated on July 1st. And actually 90% of all Canadians live within 100. It should be miles of the U.S. border. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.